Welcome to EPG Patshala lecture series in architecture for MARC students. This is the second module in urban landscape design on lighting of public spaces. Today we are going to see categories of light fixtures and landscape lighting effects. So, under the categories of light fixtures, we will see what are all the different lighting fixtures, lighting um, fixture heights, then uh, the spacings of the lighting fixtures and the distribution patterns and under landscape lighting effects, how effects can be created with the help of lighting in landscape areas primarily on the outdoor areas and uh, the effects could be primarily to focus on particular space or an object or sometimes on the whole, the whole atmosphere itself. So, how to dramatize the space with the effects. The first is on the categories of light fixtures. There are four categories of lights, first is low level landscape light next is intermediate height landscape lights, third is parking lot and roadway lights and the last is high mast lights. Of course, you all should be familiar with what high mast light is most of the lights whatever has been mentioned here. I will show you an image of how this uh, lighting fixtures would work. The first is the lower level landscape lights. Here you could see lots of lighting fixtures like bollard lights, walkway lights, your step lights that we use on the grads, uh, the underground lights, so sunken lights, all these lights are called as low level landscape lights, which are all otherwise called as localized lights because it is more close to the humans when we walk in the surface. The next is the intermediate uh, landscape lights, which is little higher than the humans and uh, mostly for uh, say uh, the pathways, walkways, uh, we use such lights. And the third is the parking lots or the roadway lights, which is mainly seen on the roads and primarily on the parking areas, mainly for the uh, vehicles to move on and from the vehicles, the pedestrians have to actually move on to the other uh, usable spaces. So, this has to be in a height such a way to enable the vehicle movement underneath. So, it has been uh, fixed in that height. The high mass lights which are almost 60 to 100 feet in height and that is the tallest height where we normally see in most of the beaches, most of the uh, spaces where uh, huge amounts of people or the public congregate, there we use one tall structure of light which is called as high mass light. So, this is low level landscape light which is to the height of say from 0 to 2 meters. So, this image on the left it shows how lighting has been used. So, these are like uh, seats or benches in which lighting has been incorporated. So, it gives nice shadow effect or nice pattern that has been created on the outdoor and uh, these are all on the floors. So, to differentiate the parts the light has been used. So, this is again the floor light, the floor has been lit. So, when people walk, it is actually a nice experience to walk on a lit floor. And these are all small sunken lights on the sides of the pathways or even on the pavements. So, it's, it gives light for people to move on. And uh, this is like a sculptural light, which is again a low level light, light rod, it has been kept in the center of the court or some park. So, these are all few examples of such lights. So, this is along with the fountain light has been incorporated. So, at certain intervals when it has been repeated you get a very dramatic effect and this is on roads to distinguish the different lanes lights have been used and this is the on the floor when people walk it has been lit. So, these are all various images of how uh, such localized light can be used of low height. So, this is uh, next to water body, a floor has been lit and different patterns have been created accordingly. In this image is a tree coat where alternatively your tree pockets and your lighting pockets have been highlighted. So, it is very interesting when people walk on it and these are like uh, light benches where the surface has also been lit and people can sit on it. So, it is dual purpose and again it is very interesting, very dramatic. So, these are all lots of examples of your low level lighting. Next is intermediate height landscape. 
which is uh, to the height of 3 meters to 5 meters. This image if you could see, this is the image which is next to a pool. So, this is uh, intermediate height which is neither low level, it is neither uh, high mast or uh, your road height levels, it is intermediate and there is lots of lighting fixtures which has been uh, available with uh, which itself looks like a uh, sculpture on its own during the daytime and during the night it gives light. This is parking lot and uh, roadway lighting which is to the height of 6 meters to 15.2 meters. Uh, this kind of light we come across in every parking spaces or most of your uh, highways. Accordingly the light fixture has been decided upon what kind of light source you are going to give, what color perception the space has to be illuminated with, the light has been decided upon. Then this gives a nice dramatic effect when you move on. So, during the daytime this becomes like a sculpture, it is a nice detail on the roadside to look upon and during the night there is a contrast of light between the white end to the color light. So, it is a nice effect that has been created, the shadow that has been cast on the surface is also very interesting. The high mass light which comes to the height of 18 to 30 meters normally in the road junctions where you cannot come up with lots of such road lights, you can have one single tall light which is high mass light and the light distribution is so wide that you can cover so much of area and most of the beaches, most of the common areas where humans uh, or public use, even those areas we have such high mass lights. So, this image shows the light distribution with the light fixture. So, there are various lighting fixtures of how the light distribution is. So, in plan and in elevation it has been shown. So, it could be circular, it could be elliptical or it can be like a fan shape. So, how the light distribution is from each fixture. So, it starts from sunken light that is low level lighting and you have intermediate level lighting and you have tall lights which is like your parking lights and your road lights. So, how the distribution pattern of lighting occurs and this image it shows how in a road section how different lighting patterns with the mounting heights and with light distribution how it showcases the area. So, from the building facades light has been highlighted to, to showcase a particular spot. So, th those are called as like spotlights and these are lights to highlight the branches of the trees or sometimes to the foliage. So, it gives a very dramatized effect during the night and these are like light poles which becomes like a sculpture in the morning, but it is a light pole in the night and these are high mass light which you can uh, have just one fixture of it to light a very larger area. Now, we are going to see about the landscape uh, lighting effects. These effects are mainly to show how uh, different during the night the space can become. The first effect is up lighting. So, under up lighting the first is on directional viewing. Directional viewing is nothing but how you direct a space to be lit. Normally in landscape it is only the plant medium that we try to lit otherwise it is only the built medium that is the architecture. So, in landscape since the foliage that is the trees are not the same everywhere. So, you get a very different drastic and dramatic effects. So, this is an example of directional viewing. So, this is the light source which is directed towards a tree branch and uh, when it is been directed accordingly you get lots of light and shadow effect on the tree branches. These are all some graphic representations of how it has been done and this image shows how in reality the image uh, or your directional viewing would look like. So, this in a garden space, it is like an outdoor pavilion where it has been directional uh, lighting which is a up lighting. So, the light source is hidden here and it has been uplit on the surface. So, the trees, the foliage has been lit, the pavilion has been lit. So, you get a very interesting effect of the space during the night because not every pocket has been lit, it is only few spots which has been lit. So, the type of fixtures that we go for uh, up lighting in directional viewing is the spotlights, accent lights, floodlights and well lights. So, under up lighting 
this one more type of lighting which is called as all round viewing which is uh, been uh, lit everywhere it is all round. So, it is not particular to one direction it is all around. So, this is the graphic of the all round viewing. So, the light source is sunk in and it is been lit all sides. Sometimes if we use lures then we can manage the angle of the viewing direction. So, this is the image of the all round viewing. So, here you see that uh, not a particular spot has been highlighted, it has been lit all over, but wherever required wherever you want to dramatize then only those spots have been differentiated. So, this is called as up lighting which is all round viewing. The second is moon lighting, this is a very interesting lighting effect. This is more related to the nature that is during night when it is a moon surface which has been lit. So, how the effect would be? So, this graphic it shows how moon lighting works. So, there are two light sources, one is the up lighting and one is down lighting. So, in a moon light effect the tree branches will have lots of light and shadow effect because of up lighting and down lighting. So, by placing light fixtures within the branches of the mature tree or by attaching a fixture to a nearby wall that shines through the branches you get this moon lighting effect. This light will cast unique shadows in the landscape. So, this is the image of how moon lighting works in reality. So, the, these are the light sources which is almost similar to your uh, foliage or to the flowering spots and uh, one light is down and one light is focused towards the top. So, you get a dramatic effect of moonlight and the fixtures for the moonlights are the floodlights, spotlights, accent lights and also sometimes well lights. So, this is the graphic showing how moonlighting works. Third is sill out lighting, this is a very interesting uh, lighting system which creates lots of sill outs. This is primarily used for trees for creating shadows uh, next to the background and also for uh, statues, sculptures or sometimes even fountains or rocks. So, the fixtures are well lights, spot or accent lights, wall wash lights and this technique involves aiming a light at a unique statue or plant to cast a eye casting shadow on the wall. So, this image it shows your um, lighting which is focusing on to a tree and also to the background. This is along with the architecture that is if you wanted to highlight an architecture then this has been lit like this. So, your tree becomes a sell out point there. So, this in reality this is an image taken from a real situation how a tree has been sell outed. So, this is an outdoor dining area where the corner planting has been highlighted with sell out lighting. So, there is lots of tree branches which cast shadow to the background it is a very nice interesting effect that has been created. So, this is the technique which shows in graphic of the sill outing technique. So, the shadow of the tree foliage falls onto the wall of the architecture and creates interesting pattern to it. Okay. Fourth is spot lighting. The fixtures for spot lighting are flood lights, spot and accent lights. The fixtures are placed high on the walls, eaves or shade structures in order to light specific areas in the landscape. Uh, say sometimes uh, in your landscape they there could be lots of uh, interesting elements that you wanted to showcase than the other areas then you spotlight those spots. This image it shows some ATM uh, machine or sometimes even a sculpture for that matter. So, it is been highlighted through spotlighting. So, this is the graphic which shows a sculpture which has been highlighted from the nearest tree. So, you spotlight it and this image it shows in reality of a pool deck which has been highlighted through spotlight. The fifth is spread lighting, the fixtures are spread lights, spread lights are used to provide light for areas of low planting for showing off ground cover, low growing shrubs or flower beds. Spread lighting is nothing but the light has been spread all over the area and it covers most of the areas in your uh, lighting space. So, the image that shows here which is in the left bottom. Uh, there are two fixtures in a tree which spreads the light all around on the uh, under surface of the tree foliage and this is projecting from the pathway this light where all your uh, ground covers your low shrubs been highlighted in the spread light. 
So, this is a graphic of showing the spread light. So, it focuses mainly on the uh, bushes, mainly on the uh, color foliage trees, not on the pathways, but to just highlight the landscape elements. So, this image it highlights how this has to be done in reality. So, you have a nice outdoor garden space which is a deck. So, you have a seating space. So, lots of your ground covers, your smaller planting mediums, your shrubs are all been highlighted uh, with your spread lighting. Next is path lighting. Path lighting, the fixtures for path lighting is mushrooms, tulip lights, lanterns, tire lights and some specialty lights which has been customized for that particular space. Path lighting in general is nothing but it is the lighting to ultimate way to provide a safe, secure and visible path for walking at the night. The purpose is very uh, known for all the paths to light on for walking purpose, it has been lit. So, these are some images for path lighting. So, we have one image here which is on either sides of the path, it has been lit. So, the human figure or the plants or the background has not been lit, only the path, the floor has been lit. So, it enables easy movement. And uh, this is like a bollard lighting where the path and also the surrounding area which is next to the pathway is also been lit. So, that the other area is not so dark and it is not like a hidden pocket. And uh, this is a little taller lighting, but uh, in such lighting you get lots of glare because it is almost striking your eye level. So, it's, it, it creates lots of glare. So, this uh, seems to be undesirable in pathway lighting, but this is also one kind of lighting, but we have to uh, understand where such lightings can be fit in. This is the real life situation of how path lighting works. So, it is a central path which takes you to the entrance of the architecture and this is the garden on either sides. So, there are lots of uh, lights being introduced onto the planting medium that is on the tree branches, but still to highlight the path at every interval there are these lights being introduced, so that the pathway is been accentuated that is it is been highlighted where exactly your path is, where exactly your landscape is. And this is the graphic that is been uh, shown for pathway light. So, the other background which is happening next to you is not being highlighted, only the path has been highlighted. So, it is again a very interesting uh, uh, effect to create lights on the paths. This is the step lighting, the fixtures for the step lighting, spot accent lights and speciality lights. Light fixtures can be resist in the rises of steps to illuminate and provide safety for stairways. So, the image here on the left it shows, this is a nice interesting example for step lighting. So, you can see the steps or the contours happening with lights. It is a very nice effect during the night. It shows a very well effect on the contours and this is a graphic showing how step lights. So, on the rises the fitting has been uh, flushed onto the rises of the steps and it lifts the step. So, that you know how many steps to move on and this is how in reality the effect would be. So, it is a very nice interesting effect instead of creating a spread light, one common light to flush the light on the steps. There are lots of these multiple lights which are all sunk in. So, this avoids lots of glare. This creates a nice effect, nice shadow effect has been created with such technique. Next is wall lighting. The fixtures for wall lighting is well lights, spot and accent lights and wall wash lights. It enhances the structural elements of the home or the hardscape. Elements that were not noticed during the day can play a dramatic role in the landscape at the night because most of the elements during the daytime would look so subtle which we would not have identified it being a very interesting element. But during the night how well we place the lights, this focuses mostly on a nice uh, technique to create an effect. Chimneys, fencing, retaining walls and structure walls are all candidates for wall lights because most of these elements during the day will look, will look so barren, it might not be an interesting element to look upon. But during night by placing such lights, this creates a very interesting element. So, the image that is shown here, 
this is almost uh, during the evening this has been taken. So, you can see that it is just a broken wall which uh, highlights a tree, but during the day this is not a very interesting element to look upon, but during the night by introducing the light fixture you create a nice uh, wall surface nice dramatic effect has been created. So, this is a graphic showing how such wall lights can be placed. So, there is an intrusion that you create onto the wall and the light has been fixed and the light you know, flushes onto the wall surface. So, when there is lots of texture that has been created on the wall you create lots of shadow effects on the wall surface. So, this is on wall lighting ok we are going to conclude this session. So, as a summary of what we had seen uh, so far, uh, we had seen the light types of lighting fixtures. So, how all uh, different lights its fixtures based on the heights, based on the positions, based on the patterns and the distribution of light, how such fixtures have to be selected and placed upon. We saw some four types of lighting types that is uh, low level light, intermediate light, uh, then parking light or say roadway light then the high mast lights. So, these are four main patterns of uh, lighting fixtures which is very predominantly used in every landscape area wherever landscape has been done. And uh, the other major portion that we had covered here is on the landscape uh, effects that has been created because of lighting. The lots of multiple effects that has been created which we had seen one by one through images and through graphics. Um, so, I had uh, talked to you upon wall lighting, I had talked to you upon step lighting and uh, these are some uh, lights which we normally use not in uh, very major areas even in minor areas where all we have smaller um, areas of steps and walls we use such lights. And the path lighting predominantly in public areas like pedestrian areas like parks or say beaches or other outdoor areas where you have to distinctively show the paths. Uh, and the hierarchy of paths have to be highlighted through this lighting. And uh, we had also seen on spread lighting where all your landscape elements, your bushes, your uh, flying beds, all these can be highlighted through spread lighting. And the spot lighting is of course, to highlight a particular spots. It could be your pool decks or even your sculptures. Sill out lighting is to dramatize the areas of plants with this sill out lighting. And of course, moonlighting is such an interesting lighting uh, technique that has been highlighted everywhere with uh, respect to the plant species. Then your up lighting, up lighting again directional and all round viewing. So, with this you create lots of differences in your landscape. Thank you.